Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click, and welcome to this new features video where I'm going to demonstrate what's new in ClickSense 3.2. In this latest release of ClickSense, we have added new self-service visualization capabilities, broader deployment options, and a stronger connection between ClickSense and ClickView. So the first feature I'm going to demonstrate is our advanced coloring option. So we've listened to our customers. They want to be able to color a chart or a KPI or use any color they want within their analysis. If they want to use brown and green or chartreuse and fuchsia, they can do that now. This basically is going to allow them to fit their coloring with corporate standards and provide consistency for measures across all of the visualizations. So to give you a quick example, if I choose my chart and I go under colors and legend, I could shut off the auto colors and then from the single color list, Underneath that, there is the Choose a Color button. I can now choose the color palette where I have a color wheel. I can choose the uh, lightness, hue, or saturation, as well as the particular color that I want my chart to be. There is also the hex code that you can copy and paste and use that elsewhere. One other item to mention is we've also applied coloring to metrics that you create within master items. So for example, I have one here called Sum of Sales Year to Date. If I edit that particular measure, we can assign a color to that particular metric automatically, such as, let's just make it green. Again, we have the color palette available. I click Save. When I click on it, I could actually see the color that's been assigned to that metric. And as I drag it, it'll actually create a visualization in the form of a KPI object with that color. The next thing that's new in ClickSense 3.2 is something we call calendar measures. And this is something I'm sure you're going to be very excited about. So calendar measures allow you to easily add time period metrics to your analysis without the need to create set expressions. So this will work with your existing date fields and you can create metrics that support various time periods such as year to date, month to date, quarter to date, etc. as well as looking at current and last time periods. The set expressions are actually created automatically and they're added to your master library, making it easy to create more advanced governed time period metrics. So allow me to demonstrate. Here I have my fields list and you can see that I do have my date field and I have a couple of numbers or measures. What I will do is right click on that and select create calendar measures. And this dialog will come up. It'll show you the date field It'll show you the field that you selected. In this case, the field we're going to aggregate is sales. It'll show you the aggregation type. In this case, we'll choose some, and then the time range. So we have yearly, we have monthly, quarterly, and weekly. And then notice on the preview of the measures, these will allow you to choose which ones you want to include into your master items. So if we go to yearly, and I want to do sum of sales year to date current year, and some of sales year to date last year, and I don't need that particular one. I could also preview the set expression syntax and then click Save to Master Items. And what that will do is include these metrics now as part of my master items. And then it'll also create KPI objects like you see here. There's current year and there's last year. Now, one thing I want to cover that is not exactly a new feature in ClickSense 3.2, but has been recently added to our product portfolio, and it's ready to be used with ClickSense and ClickView, is Click Geo Analytics. Click Geo Analytics is a mapping solution that provides geospatial analysis for your location data. Capabilities such as on-the-fly geocoding, place and name lookups, drill downs, and multi-layer visualization mapping are available to not only help you visualize, but analyze geographical information. And we have a section here on our website that provides complete guides and examples. And do note that there is also a section in the Click community where you can join the conversation with others and also watch a number of helpful videos and tutorials to help you get started with Click Geoanalytics. In ClickSense 3.2, available in the Developer Hub, we now offer a powerful new ClickView converter 
for customers that have existing ClickView applications and want to migrate or copy them to ClickSense. The converter reads ClickView application files and allows users to select dimensions, expressions, variables, and visualizations that they want to import into ClickSense. A ClickSense starter app is created with selected objects that are then populated in the master library of this ClickSense app, with some visualization functionality replicated where compatible. Going forward, we plan to update the converter to support additional functionality. Let me give you a brief example. I have a ClickView application here, and it has expressions, it has dimensions, and it has a few visualizations and some list boxes. If I go to my Explorer, you can see that this application is saved as Sales Report QVW. If we switch over to ClickSense and we access the Developer Hub, there is a utility under Tools called the ClickView Converter. And what we can do is we can drag that QVW onto the target area and it'll import and process all of those various objects. So now we have our processed objects under this title here called Sales Report. It'll show us the sheets and it categorizes all of the objects in different tabs. Now it'll make some recommendations as to which objects should be selected and not selected based off of the compatibility at this time with the converter. So we can see that within the sheets we have the different names of the objects as well as the option to choose those objects to convert those over. By default filter panels are not converted. We can see a list of all the different dimensions, all of the expressions or measures, if there are any variables that are available, they will populate over as well. And any unsupported objects, if recognized, will be displayed in the unconverted objects. Then on this side, you can see the various visualization types, tables, dimensions as well. If you choose to select those particular items and you're ready to convert, you click Create App. And what it'll do is it'll create a copy of that app in your work area. So if I go back to my ClickSense Hub, and I refresh, you can see I now have an app called Sales Report. And as I mentioned earlier, objects that are supported within the converter will be placed within the master items, as you see here. And there's our visualizations. So there's my gauge and my bar chart. There are my measures. And here are some of my dimensions. Now within ClickSense 3.2, ClickSense Enterprise customers can benefit from a Click-supported desktop client in production environments when authenticating against their existing ClickSense Enterprise server. A new security method has been implemented requiring ClickSense desktop users to log in before accessing the desktop hub. If you are an existing enterprise user, you can receive an authentication link from your administrator, which will allow you to use your server credentials to log in. If not, you can always register for a free Click ID and authenticate that way, and continue to use ClickSense Desktop freely without support. Finally, we are offering a new option for multi-node ClickSense deployments that we call Shared Persistence. Shared Persistence allows multi-node ClickSense deployments to share a single repository database and uses shared network folders to operate instead of traditional database synchronization. This provides more architecture flexibility for larger deployments and improves stability and performance. I'd like to thank you for watching and learning what's new in ClickSense 3.2. For more improvements not covered in this video, be sure to check out the product release notes available in the Click Help site. Also check out these other resources to learn more about ClickSense and be sure to join the conversation with me and others on the Click community. Take care and I'll see you on the next video.